When I awoke from my dreamless sleep, I was just in time to witness the end of the world. Yes. You want to save The legends had told of her coming. Banisher of darkness, bringer of light, redeemer of souls. She'd come at the end of days to guide our souls to salvation. Damn you, lightning! What's it gonna be? You gonna try to kill me? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Death, Light. So now what? This is the bit where you save my soul? I could help you, if that's what you want. Damn it! What kind of answer is that? <laughs> uh-uh. Now that isn't going to work. <laughs> Now that's not right. You're not supposed to throw your life away. <laughs> uh. I swear that kid is a demon. Angels of death and demons? You're attracting the wrong crowd, Snow. No one is gonna stop me. You hear? Not you, definitely not her. If I have to fight the savior, then I will.
The centuries have changed us, Snow and me. Once we fought desperately together against our fates. Now he's patron of a never-ending revel, presiding over a banquet at the end of the world. And I've become the savior. I'm a servant of God, sent to a world being consumed by chaos. Tell me, Snow. Has ever a day passed when you haven't thought about Sarah? The girl you loved, my younger sister. How long has she been gone now? She brought us together and made us allies and friends. I can't give her back to you, but I can save your soul and free you from your long torment. It'll be my first act as savior. Mr. Hope best time. Any ideas? What do I do next? Blake, come on. Just call me Hope, okay? Right now, your number one priority is snow. Don't let him get away. Light appears at last. Is the savior a sign of coming destruction or a promise of hope? I would like to bet on hope. If you believe you are the true savior, you'll need to be carefully prepared for the battles that await you on your journey. Hurry. 
What's Snow up to anyway? Where's he going? I'm getting powerful chaos readings from his... against us somehow. You'll have to ask him yourself. How I feel like dying. He liked to look after people, but lording it over an entire city? Well, it wasn't his choice. He started out just trying to help everyone, and eventually, he became ruler by popular acclaim. Although I'm not so sure he actually rules anything anymore. He doesn't do much these days except preside over the nightly revelry. Lord of the Feast Hall. Doesn't look like he's enjoying it much, though. When I looked into his eyes, I didn't see much of the old snow. Right, got it. doing here if you're playing around in the middle of this chaos I'm guessing you're not human <laughs> you can see when you're inside this stuff hmm then you can't be one of God's regular lackeys can you Huh? <laughs> 
Listen, Hope, I need more info. Can you analyze this chaos matter for me? I've been trying to do just that, but it's no good. None of my instruments will tell me anything. It's just too hard to see. What do you mean? I'm not sure. The sensors know it's there, all right. But when they actually look into it, they can't pick up anything at all. Sometimes it's so thick, my monitors go completely blank. Sorry, Light. I'll try to feed you as much info as possible, but with this chaos, I'm not much help. It's locked. Can I force it? That might be beyond even you. Hold on a second. I'll see what I can do from here. <gasps> hmm, there's a lot of chaos building up back there. Yes, indeed. And Snow's inside, or whatever's left of him. Well, he has been living without hope for centuries. Now the world's about to end. He might have lost his mind entirely. If it were anyone else, I'd say that was a given. Do you think it could have gotten to him, though? Broken even his spirit? I hope not, but... <gasps> Light! You've been spotted! You've gotta get out of there, now! After coming all this way? I'm his last chance, damn it. I know what he's going through. The pain of losing Sarah. That's true. If there's anything left of Snow, as the savior, you're the only one who can rescue him. That's why you have to protect yourself. If you're killed, it really will mean the end of the world. And then who can you save? All right, fine. Take me back to the Ark. Hold on. So she'll understand his pain? She thinks she's going to save his soul? Would you listen to this nonsense? Ugh, God turns her into the savior and it all goes straight to her head. <laughs> Once upon a time, I committed a terrible sin. It happened long ago, in a past that I cannot change. I was fighting a war that never ended. I thought I was saving the world, and I needed help. So I turned to Sarah, the only family I had. She was my younger sister. I sent her to her death. I knew what I did could not be forgiven, but I prayed that someday it could be undone. Dreaming of the day I might bring her back. I fell into a long sleep. It was a sleep as dark as death. The centuries passed, and each one seemed like an eternity until... One day, the light touched me. I knew what it was. It was God himself speaking to me. his voice, and I felt warmth on my skin as it spoke. He told me what I had to do. I would be his servant, and if I succeeded in doing his bidding, my reward would be a miracle. He said she would live again. My sister, Sarah, and I'd have her back at last. And so I was chosen by God to rescue lost souls and guide them past the end of this world and into the next. I became the savior.
Light, there's something I want to tell you. Something I think you have to hear. It'll take some explaining, so when you have the time, come and talk to me. I've got something important to discuss with you. Please talk to me when you have a chance. That is the Book of Conquests, an ensorcelled tome. It draws on your memories to recreate foes that you have previously defeated, so you can fight them again.
Hello, Lightning. Welcome home. Hope, Estime. Once, long ago, we fought side by side, bound by a common destiny. He was just a boy then, kicked around by fate, scared and angry. But we became friends, and then he grew up. He was going to be humanity's great leader, the one who'd lead us all to a brighter future. But it didn't work out the way any of us expected. A lot of things changed during my long sleep. When I woke, the Hope who I'd seen become a man was a boy again. He was up here, in lonely command of the Ark. And this was where he told me about God's plans for the two of us, and the world. Bunevelza, God of Light, has made a decision. The gates are open and chaos has flooded through, consuming the world and everything in it. Not even God can stop it, and he isn't going to try. Instead, he's going to build a brand new world. But he needs people to live in it. What would be the point of a world without souls? That's where you come in, Light. You're the last piece in the puzzle. You're the savior. It's a simple role. You have to rescue as many people as you can from this world and lead them to the new one. It's an incredible opportunity. You can bring salvation to hundreds, maybe thousands. In return, you'll get your chance to bring Sarah back. A deal, huh? I scratch God's back and he gives me what I want. My sister. He's giving you a chance, no guarantees. I know it isn't right using your sister, but... It doesn't matter. Huh? God is using my dead sister as a bargaining chip. Something like that should infuriate me to no end. But for whatever reason, I don't feel angry. It's like there's a hole where she used to be. I think I know what you mean. I'm the same way. It all happened such a long time ago. I remember it clearly, but the feelings, they're gone. Maybe that's how God wants it. Maybe emotions and his servants just distract us from what we're supposed to do. So he got rid of them for us. Maybe he did, and maybe returning me to childhood was part of his plan too. But we can't expect to understand everything he does. Of course I had to accept God's deal. What choice did I have? It was my fault that Sarah died. If the only way I could save her was by doing God's will, so be it. With Hope Estime to guide me, I began my holy mission. Liberating the souls of the living from a dying world, and ushering them into a new one. The Savior. Servant of mighty Benevelza himself. Light? Light, what's the matter? What is it? Are you alright? I'm fine, just reminiscing. Five hundred years ago, chaos was unleashed, and our world began to be consumed. Five short centuries. That's what it took to destroy all of creation. Now there's barely anything left at all. And when the Savior has used all her light, the bells will toll and the world will end. Is that what you told me? Yes. But when that time comes, Bunevelza will finally awaken, and he'll bend his great will to create a new world. Right. And in the meantime, I've got some souls to save. Yes. As many as you can. Remember, every soul you leave behind will be lost for all eternity. As you're here, you're safe. You can rest and not worry about what's happening in the world below. When you're in the Ark, time ceases to flow for anyone but us. Is that all God can do? He can stop the flow of time up here, but he's helpless to prevent the world from being destroyed. Yes. In 13 days, God will reawaken. It'll all be over then, and no power in the universe can stop it. But the problem is, the world may have even less time than that. 
It doesn't happen at the same time? It should, but the world has been weakening rapidly under the onslaught of the chaos. The pace of the destruction is accelerating. Your problem is, if the world ends too soon, you won't have enough time to save all the souls you can. You have to delay the end for as long as possible. Now listen carefully, Light. What I'm going to tell you is very important. As the Savior, you have a special life force. I call it Aradia. It's the power of God's light. It gives you your powers, and much more. If you offer your life force, this Aradia, you can give energy to the world and delay the final destruction for a while. I can delay the destruction, but not avoid it forever. When God wakes after the 13th day, the world is screwed whatever I do. But what does it matter how many days are left? The end stays the same. Why not keep the Aradia for myself? Because if you did that, and the world ends before the 13th day, God will deem that you have failed. Then what will happen to your bargain? Will he still deliver on his promise if he believes that you failed to deliver on yours? Right, the bargain. In other words, if I don't keep the world alive for 13 days, I don't save Sarah. And not just Sarah either. The entire human race might be lost. So do you see, Light? Aradia is the key. You have to gather as much of it as you possibly can. And the way you do that is by saving people's souls. So that's what I've got to do. Save souls so that I can save Sarah. Yes, exactly. Remember how much snow has changed? Here at the end of the world, there are many people like him caught in the grip of despair, their hearts shackled by regret and longing. If you reach out and help them with their troubles, you can break those shackles. Then their souls will be released. They'll be free to be reborn in the new world. And in return, your savior life force will grow. So that's what he wants. Rescue as many souls as I can before the world ends and takes humanity with it. My mission. Are you doing okay? Who am I exactly? It's a question I don't have the answer to. I don't know how I know the things I'm telling you. I don't know who gave me the knowledge. It's not that I have forgotten my past. Some memories are still there, and I can summon them when I want. It's just that I can't recall the emotions they should evoke, as if they're images of someone else's life. I know that I once lived in a great city on the surface of the planet. I know that Snow and I joined forces to try and battle the menace of the chaos. And then, suddenly, I was here. I tried to find out what happened. According to records that still survived, the man called Hope Estime disappeared 169 years ago. But the records and my memory end there. What happened after that? I can only assume I was in the hands of God. I was part of his plan. So he took me and prepared me for the role that I had to play. The Ark is the remains of the artificial cocoon, a planet built of steel back when humanity still dared to dream of greatness. Bunavelza has repurposed the world we built. This is where the souls of the saved are kept, ready to be reborn in the new world. But the people down on the surface have forgotten what this stands for and simply call it a moon. The destruction began 500 years ago, but you know that. It was when the chaos first flooded into our world. Most of the world was lost immediately under the ocean of chaos. Only one small region survived. The survivors call their island of refuge Nova Chrysalia. The chaos brought destruction and a kind of immortality too. Suddenly everyone stopped growing. It was like we'd lost our time. But if that was a gift, it was a poisoned one. We could not age, and neither could new life be born. There were no more children, but although we were ageless, we were not immune to death. Sickness, accidents, and violence could still kill us. Life remained as fragile as it had always been, and so humanity began a new chapter of its history, the population slowly shrinking, the survivors falling into an ennui born of lives that last too long. Eventually, new creeds took hold and new legends created. One of these told of the Savior, a servant of God. She would descend to Nova Chrysalia at the end of the world, humanity's last chance for salvation. Are you doing okay?
No more lectures today. You can head for the surface anytime you want. Just remember, though, you have to come back here every morning at 6. You're giving the Savior a curfew. Is that it? There is a good reason. I'll explain it to you when the time comes. We can use the warp machine to send you back down. Just step in front of the device whenever you're ready to leave. I'm here to help. device is right there. By using the warp device, I can teleport you back down to the surface. I'm worried about Snow. I should go to his palace. You could, but I suggest you visit another city instead. You want me to abandon Snow? Down on the surface, time is stopped for everyone. The palace will still be on high alert. It would be next to impossible to get anywhere close to snow. You're saying I should let things cool down first. I'm going to send you to Luxarian. It's the capital of the world. Or, what's left of it, anyway. I'll place you inside an inbound train. When the train stops at the station, you can get off with the other passengers. Something has happened in front of the station. All right. Do it. You're surprisingly calm for someone who's about to venture into unknown territory. But you were always brave. Brave? I don't feel brave. I don't feel anything. No worry, no confusion, no fear. That's good. But you still need to stay safe. <laughs> 